What's going on guys, ETP coming at you guys with another video today and happy release day to everyone out there. We survived the hype train, 2K16 is finally here and we finally get a chance to get our hands on the game and really start putting in some time on it and really realizing how good of a game it is. I put in a lot of time already, I got the game last night at midnight and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Gameplay is great, modes are great, everything so far seems really, really improved and I can't wait to continue playing it and get started on the draft classes and all types of that stuff. So in this video, we are going to be breaking down create a player. And as you guys know, create a player is huge for me, obviously making the draft classes. This is what I use for the draft classes. This is the only thing I can use for the draft classes. So I'm going to be breaking it all down in this video, talking about the positives and negatives of it this year. And I really would be interested to hear what you guys have to say about this in the comment section. Also, just leave your thoughts down there about 2K16 so far. How are you enjoying the game? Have you picked it up yet? Do you think it's a massive improvement over 2K15? Leave all that stuff down below in the comment section. And before I start the video, I also want to direct you guys to another video. If you have not seen the draft class informational video that I posted the other day, definitely go check that out. That gives information about what the draft class is going to be like and when it's going to be coming out because I've had so many people ask me when it's going to be coming out and I keep having to send them over to that video. So if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you go watch it. So we'll go ahead and jump into create a player and I'm going to start off with the negatives because I feel like these are the things that need to be heard the most. In my opinion, there are four really big things, mainly two, two things that are absolutely huge, two other things that are pretty big as well that are missing from create a player that I think if they were there, we'd have a nearly perfect create a player. Number one, the ability to add tattoos. I don't know why we cannot add tattoos this year, especially with that insane tattoo editor that they added for my career. I really wish we could add those to creative players. That's a huge thing needed, and hopefully we get that next year. Also, body types. We can't change the body types of players. No matter what their weight is, you can't, you know, that doesn't fluctuate. Their body type is the same for every single player. I think that needs to change. And that's another thing that I found a little surprising that it wasn't in this year because body scanning and stuff was such a big thing this year. I thought maybe they give us the option to change body types for creative players, but that is not in the game this year as well. Those are the two biggest things that I feel need to be added. Two other things that are really important is one, the height cap. The height cap is still seven foot two. The height cap should be seven foot seven for offline creative player. And hear me when I say offline. I do not want the height cap to be very tall online. That will mess things up. They obviously have a seven three height cap for my career, which I still don't understand how the thing the my career online which they need to restrict height cap actually has a higher height cap than the regular offline sandbox creative player that doesn't make any sense to me but we need a taller height cap because some guys are taller like for my draft class i'm gonna end up having to make mamadou injai who plays for irvine he's seven foot six he is going to you know have a shot to get drafted here pretty soon but I'm not going to be able to make him realistically because I can only make guys up to 7'2". So I hope that changes um, in next year's game as well. And I think that we should have an actual feet and inches wingspan slider. I don't like the regular slider where it's, you know, 0 through 100 because that doesn't really make sense. You don't really know what the wingspan you're making actually is. And if I'm not mistaken, I haven't gone into my career yet, but I saw some leaked stuff before release. It looks like in my career, you can actually choose your wingspan based on feet and inches, which again, doesn't make sense why that's not in create a player also. Um, that should be there as well. And also one more thing that doesn't really have to do with create a player, but it has to do with sharing rosters and stuff. I really wish we would get a description box for sharing rosters so you could give people updates on what's going on. You could drop your links in there. You could drop your Twitter handle so people can go and follow you on there for updates, all kinds of that stuff. I think a description box is very much needed and the ability to upload creative players, all that type of stuff. I think that's very much needed. So 
those are my main concerns with create a player and roster sharing this year it doesn't seem that much different they did add some cool things in which i'm going to talk about in a second but tattoos body types height cap description box and the wingspan slider need to be addressed and hopefully they are in there in 2k17 it's never too early to start talking about the next game um and hopefully the guys at 2k will kind of realize that this needs to be in there and they can make some changes for next year's game so now we'll talk about the positives of create a player and there are a lot of positives they added in some pretty cool things this year number one just a few little small features um you can now change your player's nickname so this was huge because in 2k15 it randomly assigned a nickname so you'd have the announcers calling all these guys these crazy nicknames that you didn't choose and it just kind of messed up the commentary in general once you got into my league and my gym and you started using rookies with names that they couldn't pronounce um, I'm glad that you can now choose your nickname you'll still have some crazy ones in there but at least you can choose one that probably won't get on your nerves as much as some of the others also the peak start and peak end is a huge thing to add into the game if you guys don't know how that works basically now you can set up when a player is gonna hit his maximum point so if his potential is like 90, theoretically, um, at the age of whatever you set it at, say 28, if you set the uh, peak start at 28, at 28 years old, that's where he's going to max out and he's not going to get any better. And then you can set the peak in, say you set that to 35, once he hits 35 years old, that's when he's going to start declining. So between 28 and 35, that's his prime. That's when he's going to be at his best. You can now edit that and create a player, which is a huge feature. will add a lot of realism as well. They also added in some new player types so you can um, set up what type of plays will be called for certain players. Some other really cool things that they did were they now separated badges, attributes, tendencies, accessories, all that stuff. They separated them into different tabs. So like for tendencies, for example, instead of just having a ridiculously long list of tendencies, now they're split up into categories. So you have the offensive um, tendencies, you have the defensive tendencies, rebounding, um, mental tendencies, all that type of stuff. You have those inside um you know different tabs and same with attributes same with badges they're all separated based on category which is good that's gonna add um you know just add things make it a little bit more fluid when creating players that same goes for signatures and all kinds of that stuff there are a lot more signatures in the game this year as well with uh the post game and all kinds of that stuff and some of the really cool signatures that I noticed, I actually noticed this like literally just a few minutes ago because it was so deep within the signature thing. You can set um, how a guy reacts when he dunks. Like you can set his facial expression. Do you want him to be intense or do you want him to be calm? You can choose that. You can also choose whether or not a player cho choose gum during the game, which is really, really cool. I wish they had that last year. And I would have put that on Terry Rozier because he chews gum every single game. Um, but that's a really, really cool touch as well. But what doesn't make sense to me is how can we let our, how can we choose if a player chews gum or not, and then we can't add tattoos? That just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's kind of funny though. Um, and then a big thing that I didn't even notice that just slipped my mind all of a sudden was hairstyles. The hairstyles are so good. This is the first year that 2K has really nailed it with hairstyles. They have a ton of them. They have um, different lengths. So like the high top fade last year, a lot of guys had a high top fade, but it wasn't that high. Um, now you have a high top fade. You have a medium one. You have a short one. Same goes with like dreads and cornrows and they have waves and more cropped hairstyles and just all kinds of stuff. Some really popular ones in there that will, um, you know, improve my draft class and improve creative players in general. It's awesome having all of those hairstyles. So that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm forgetting too much, but that's basically my breakdown of creative player in NBA 2K16. Again, there are some very good things within creative player this year. Um, oh, you can add headbands as well. I can't believe I forgot that. That's something a lot of people ask about, um, but you can add headbands and the accessories in general do look a little bit better this, um, this year. And you can, you know, you add, you have new socks, you have new shoes, you can pick colorways, all that stuff, just kind of going off the top of my head. Um, there are some really cool things in this year, but there are those glaring things that need to be addressed, and hopefully they are in there 
for 2K17. So that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, let me know what you think of 2K16 and create a player down below in the comment section. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I'll be posting a ton of 2K16 content all throughout the year. And if you guys would be interested in that, again, make sure you do subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll talk to you guys later.